Hello everybody, today we're going to use the software program R in order to perform a linear regression. So it's going to be very simple and I'm going to show you the first steps in working with R and setting up a linear regression model. In later videos this will become more complex and we're going to look at multiple regression models with and without interactions among continuous and categorical variables but for now we keep it very simple. So you can see here I've just opened the interface of R. It's the 32-bit version of it on a Windows system. And when you open R, you can see here is the console. It's version 3.0.1, so the most recent one that's available up to now. And we can see that we end up in the console window here. and in order to perform a linear regression model, we have to use the lm command, which comes from the base package that's already loaded. So we want to do a linear regression using the lm command. Before we can start with that, we open a new script window. That's the usual way to start working in R. And for convenience, we arrange the windows so we'll tile them vertically, so the left-hand window here is going to be the editor and the right-hand window will be the console. And now we can start typing and you may wonder now yeah, which kind of data are we going to use. We're going to use a data set that already ships with R, with your personal um, R installation. In order to browse through the data sets, we just use the command data, brackets open, brackets closed, and you can see that a window pops up here. And there's a wide range of data sets available already with which you can play a little bit. We're going to use the so called air quality data set, so that's what we're going to do. We type in the same line here air quality and this loads the air quality data set. And what I'm doing here every time I type something on the left hand side I press Control R to send it over to the console on the right hand side. If you don't want to press Control R you can also push this button in the middle here run line or selection you can see it here. This has essentially the same effect. All right, so we loaded the data set. Where is it? Let's just see the names of it, names of the air quality data set, so that we can get a feeling for it. Control R, and you can see here, there are several variables in this data set. And um, we can copy these variable names just to the left-hand side so that we know what we have in here. Don't forget to put a hash here so that this line is not interpreted by R as being as containing any command. All right, so we know this data set contains the variables ozone, then something with solar, radiation, wind, temperature, month and day. We're not going to focus on month and day, we're just going to look today at the relationships among ozone, solar radiation and wind. And the first thing to do before we start doing any regression model is we plot the data, so we use the plot command, brackets open, and uh, we know that the response variable is going to be the ozone concentration, and one potential explanatory variable would be the solar radiation. If we just use this command and press Ctrl R, then R will moan and say, object ozone not found. So what has happened here? We haven't told it which data set to use. So we have to say data equals air quality in here. If we do that, we get a plot here. We can see that there is definitely going to be a nonlinear relationship among ozone and solar radiation at some levels of solar radiation, the ozone concentration is higher than at lower levels of solar radiation. So just for the sake of simplicity, we don't do anything about this nonlinearity here. 
we just pretend that this relationship would be linear and uh, we use the lm command now in order to fit a linear regression line to these data. So the first thing to do is calculate the mean of the ozone concentration and plot the line here because that would be the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis would be there is no relationship between solar radiation and ozone. So let's do that first. We have to calculate the mean of the ozone concentration and be reminded that we always have to address from which data set this variable has to be taken from. So air quality dollar ozone. That's what we're going to do. We want to calculate the mean of the ozone concentration within and across the whole air quality data set. And it happens to be NA. Why is that? Well, if we just uh, type air quality ozone on the left hand side, we can see the variable with all its values and we can see immediately from looking at it that it contains NAs, that means not available. There are missing data in this variable. So in order to calculate the mean, we have to get rid of these missing values. So what we are doing is we type mean air quality dollar ozone comma na dot rm equals true. So we want to remove the missing values. na dot remove equals true. And if we do that, we get a value of 42. Now let's go back to our window here to the so-called graphics device and let's check if that's reasonable. So a value of an ozone concentration of 42. Could that be a true mean of these data? We don't know it. Could be that uh, maybe a geometric mean would be better here. Anyway, um, we just plot this mean value now in this graph. How do we do that? Let's give this mean a value. Let's call it mean.ozone equals this thing here. And we don't need this line anymore. Air quality dollar ozone, just delete what we don't need anymore. And uh, let's already comment on our script here. So use the hash and write uh, calculate mean ozone concentration. Na is removed. Okay, so we have this here now. And all we have to do is, given that we've already opened the plot window here, all we have to do is use the AB line command and say H equals mean dot ozone. So what could that mean? It means plot a horizontal line, H, horizontal line, at the mean value of ozone. So let's do it. Control R. There you go. This is what the null model would look like if there would be no relationship among solar radiation and ozone. All right, and the next thing is fairly easy to do. Uh, it's going to be use a linear model to fit a regression line. So use LM to fit a regression line through these data. And be reminded that LM, given that we have this courier font here, it looks a bit like a one here, this L. So please be very careful when typing that you really use LM because no object in R is allowed to start with a number. So if you type one M, that would not be good. Use LM instead. Okay. So the principal structure will be lm response variable tilde explanatory variable. So what's the response variable in our case? The response variable is what we measured, what we're interested in. This is the ozone concentration and uh, it happens to be called ozone tilde solar.radiation data equals air quality and we're not done yet. We want to give this object here, this LM object, a name. So call it model1 equals LM 
ozone tilde solar radiation, comma, data equals air quality. That's what we need, that's all we need in order to set up a linear regression model. Run it, you can see that there is no error popping up on the right hand side, so we have, we've done it correctly. If we just type model 1 now, there will be something stored in this object now. First of all, there is the call, which is what we typed in order to fit the linear model. You see the formula here, the formula object. Everything in R is an object. And uh, we see the so-called coefficients. So what would that be? For example, this thing here called intercept. Let's look again at our graph. So what's the intercept? The intercept will be the value of ozone concentration for zero solar radiation. So just imagine we would fit by eye, we would fit a line through here. Definitely this intercept would be potentially zero, potentially a bit higher than zero. And what the computer estimates here is that it's around uh, ozone concentration of 18.6. And what's this other term here called solar.r here? This is the slope. This is delta y over delta x. So the increase of ozone concentration with increasing solar radiation. So let's, before we inspect this object further, this model one here, let's plot the line, a, b line, model one, and let's give it a different color, color equals red. And let's see what's happening here. So it's very important that you keep this plot window here open. So you start always with a plot and then you add your lines. Otherwise you will get an error message. Here you go. So the AB, AB line command on this model has already produced uh, a line that goes through here. What you can see immediately is that the variance increases with the mean. So with higher solar radiation, the spread of the values of ozone here increases. And uh, we should be able to see that also when we are looking at the residuals. So let's look at the residuals of this model, plot model one. And this is something important. Now, if we plot model one, it produces a plot, a series of plots of a model inspection. So if we do that, the first thing happening is that the mouse cursor changes its shape. It's awaiting something. And you see here on the right hand side, waiting to confirm page change here. We have to do something now. So the best thing to do is to click on the plot. And we can see clearly now, as I just said, the residuals, the spread in the residuals increases with the fitted values here. So we see a pattern in this graph uh, indicating that our linear regression model may not be um, perfectly representing the true relationship between ozone and solar radiation. So we can see there is something wrong and we'll cure that um, in some of the later videos. Um, this is the most important plot to look at, the residuals versus the fitted values. The fitted values are the ozone concentrations predicted by the model, and the residuals are the deviations from these fitted values. We have to uh, click again to see further plots. Uh, the next one shows whether our residuals are approximately normally distributed or not. So if they were normally distributed, they would all lie on this line here. What we can see clearly here is that the deviations are above this line here, indicating that the distribution is shaped differently than the normal distribution. This is not so important in order to uh, produce good predictions, but nevertheless, it's good to check this. Um, and we'll find later on in the course, we will find ways to cure these things without even having to transform the response variable. Okay, the next plots are not that important, so I just close these graphics devices now, for now. Okay, what we've done now, we've 
produced this model. We've also plotted the line. I want to show you some more things now. A very useful uh, tool is the so-called term plot, term plot of model one. Using this on the data produces a plot already showing us the relationship um, between solar radiation and uh, ozone concentration. Uh, so we can see the effects that this solar radiation has on the ozone concentration immediately without further um, problems here. Okay, another thing we want to do, of course, is we want to summarize, summary, so we want to summarize our model. In particular, we want to know how sure we are about the estimates. So this is what the summary tells us. First of all, the summary again shows us the call, so what we typed in order to fit the model. Then it shows us a summary of the residuals. The median is already not zero, it should be zero. So the median is minus eight, the minimum is minus 50 about, the maximum is plus 119. So we see that the residuals are clearly not symmetrically uh, distributed among uh, the value of zero here. And then we get the most important part of the summary, which is the coefficients. We get the intercept and its standard error, and the slope and its standard error. And these t values here result from dividing this estimate here by the corresponding standard error. The p value on the right hand side shows the probability of observing a t value larger than this one here and given the t distribution and it shows that we are quite confident that our intercept here is definitely different from zero which is not surprising and for solar radiation we see that the slope is also different from zero. Okay then we find the r squared value here, which is 0.12. The adjusted r squared value is adjusted for the degrees of freedom used up by the model. And the f statistic gives us the p value of the overall regression here. And it happens to be that this p value is exactly the same one as the one for the slope up here, just that this one has a bit fewer digits printed here. Okay, so summarizing what we've did today, we've used the air quality data set to perform linear regression using the lm command. The lm command always works by putting in the response variable first, followed by a tilde and then the explanatory variable. In later videos, we'll introduce more variables We'll introduce nonlinear terms and I will show you that different cures are available for variance heterogeneity. So for this residual pattern that we observed here, this increasing spread of the residuals with increasing fitted values. But for today, as this is only an introduction to LM, I thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you again soon in one of the next videos. Bye bye.